Maas Dahlke is a software developer who lives in Denmark aboard his 30-foot sailboat named Obelix. Maas aspires to become a full-time cruiser and spends his spare time renovating a much larger sailboat named Athena. Maas makes some of the best do-it-yourself boat project videos that I've ever seen. If you'd like to check out his videos, there's a link to his channel in the description below. Mo and I were thrilled that Moss could spend a few days visiting us aboard Paragon in the Faroe Islands, and we look forward to the day that Athena and Paragon are in the same anchorage. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So, when did you first discover sailing? Well, I've always wanted to sail, but I grew up in a part of Denmark where there is no recreational sailing. So I had the desire to go sailing, but I didn't actually go sailing until I was, I want to say, 30? 30? Yeah. <laughs> you never went sailing before no. age 30? No, it's just when I went to college, I was basically doing that, then I purchased a house that needed to be fixed up, and yeah. When did you first go sailing? Like, was it through, like, a friend or oh, no, sailing that was, club? Or? I just signed up to, uh, to like, some sailing courses. What kind of boats were you first sailing on? And well, that was a, was a Danish-built fiberglass boat, a Maxi 77, which is a 70s boat from Denmark. Back then, a lot of families would go on vacations in them, but they're not huge. Yeah. I forget the exact length, but it's 20-some feet. At what point did you realize that you wanted to get your own sailboat? Um, well, after the first lesson. Really? You yeah. knew right away? I knew right away, and I think I had had maybe a month or so of lessons. Yeah. And I went out and purchased Oplix. So fast. Yeah. When did you decide that you were going to live on that boat? Was that the original well, plan? It was already in the back of my mind when I purchased the boat. Yeah. Um, what got me started to realize my dream of sailing was actually an accident where I fell down a flight of stairs. And that forced me to start thinking about what it is I wanted to do with my life. That's why I signed up for the sailing course. So I had this idea that I wanted a boat, so I needed to learn how to sail. And I wanted to get that boat because I wanted to live aboard it and go long distance cruising. So it was all part of the dream from, from the beginning. So your whole sailing life might not have happened if you hadn't injured yourself? Yeah. What happened? It might not. What happened? I was just going down to go to work and my foot slipped. Oh my god. So I fell down the stairs and I got some nerve damage in my back. It ruptured a disc and that started pressing on the nerve. So it wasn't actually until a few days later I started having serious pain. I ended up getting an operation to remove that disc and that made me think about what I wanted to do with my life. That's so interesting. When you realize it like doesn't last forever. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah, that was how I got started. How long did you live aboard Obelix? It's been two years. What kind of boat is she? She's an Alvin Ballard. It's a 30-foot sailboat. She's from 1973. Mm -hmm. And I chose her because she was the biggest boat I could afford at that point in time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She's not really that well suited for liverboard stuff mm -hmm. because there's no standing headroom. But the Alvin Ballards have a good reputation. They're stiff, seaworthy boats. Mm -hmm. And several of them have crossed the Atlantic, and I believe even a few have done circumnavigation. So they're they're solid boats. You said that you had a house. Yeah. And then you bought the boat and moved aboard yeah. the boat. And did you maintain both? I did for for a year or so. I started noticing that I wasn't using my house. I'd say maybe half of the house was just locked and blocked off, so that I wouldn't have to clean it. <laughs> And I was living in just basically my kitchen and my bedroom, and, and that was it. Why did I need that house? I mean, it's just a lot of wasted space. Did you sell it? Yeah. Wow. That must have been so exciting when you realized, yeah, this really is it. I'm going to sell the house. Yeah. And just move on to this small sailboat. The whole time you've been maintaining your full-time job. Yeah. That was such a fun time. I mean... It was a big change, and 
it was kind of emotional to have to get rid of the house yeah. but at the same time it was very fulfilling to get rid of all the stuff because of course I couldn't bring any stuff with me about all place. I had to throw away basically everything. TV, stereo and all that kind of stuff went to friends and the rest just got thrown out. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> I want to do that again. Wow. That was so liberating. <laughs> that saying about you don't own your stuff, your stuff owns you or something mm -hmm. like that. That's so true. Yeah. So true. What did all your friends think? I'd say most of them thought it was pretty cool. And your parents? Well, my parents are very supportive, so they didn't have an issue with it. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Did they sail before you decided to learn how to sail? or no, no, no. My parents aren't big on sailing. I think my uncle took them out once or a couple of times maybe, and they did not really enjoy it from what they've told me. I have had them over a couple of times, and um, yeah. And they're supportive? They're very supportive. That's wonderful. Very supportive. That's wonderful. You moved on from Oblix to this new boat, and how did that all happen? I started realizing that this, the lack of standing headroom is kind of annoying, and also the fact that because there's so little storage, yeah. every time you need to get to something, you need to move something else. It's usually not just one thing, it's usually a bunch of stuff. And then when you've got the thing you're digging for, then you have to put everything back again. So it gets really annoying to live in that small of a space. I know tons of people have circumnavigated in shoe boxes and whatnot. Mm. That's just not for me. I need just a little bit more room to be comfortable. So after that experience, it didn't send you back to living on land. No. It sent you in the opposite direction. Yeah, I got a bigger. a bigger boat. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I picked her up last last summer in Scotland. And ever since then, I've been busy doing a somewhat extensive refit. What kind of boat is she, and how did you find her? What was your search criteria? She's a Warrior 38. They're British built boats. There were around, I want to say, 49 Warrior 38s built. She is a flush decked. She's from 1984, I want to say. 87, maybe. I cannot remember that. <laughs> well, she's from the 80s. Okay. <laughs> So you were looking for a bigger boat. That was that was the primary thinking. You just needed more space. You were living aboard and yeah. tired of like always having to take stuff out of lockers and shove them back in there just to get one little thing. Yeah, I do live in the hope that I'll find a girlfriend that want to go cruise and live a, a cruising life. So a little bit bigger boat might give me better chances of finding someone special to, to share that lifestyle with. <laughs> what kind of cruising do you want to do? Where do you want to go? plan is to push off from Denmark in maybe four years. That's what I'm going for. And then I don't plan on having a return date. I want to go see the world. I'd say there aren't any places I don't want to go, but there are places that I'm more drawn towards. For instance, the high latitudes. So the Fair Islands would be a cool place to spend some time. The west coast of Norway, Scotland, Ireland, uh, Iceland, Greenland. Northwest Passage, Alaska, Canada, stuff like that. Wow. That's the dream, at least. Wow. So what do you do for work right now? I'm a software developer. And I've been doing that for 10 years. A big part of that was spent in project management and team management. But I'm back to being a software developer, in part because I figured it'd be easier for me to get freelance jobs as a, as a software developer rather than a manager. That's what I do, and that's what I plan on doing for the rest of my life. That's that's how I want to support my cruising lifestyle. Coding. Yeah. Programming. Yeah. Wow. Do you think in the future you'll do that on your boat and remotely? That's the plan. Like, I would love to spend the off season or the winter season yeah. just hammering through a, a few freelance jobs, and then when the summer comes around, you could go cruising. So what happens in between now and then? What's the current state of the boat and how's the renovation going? Well, the renovations are great. <laughs> uh, they're taking a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but I kind of expected that. So right now I'm busy drying out the hull because she had a bit of osmosis when I purchased her. And um, I also just removed the teak deck, which has revealed a core in the sandwich construction which isn't really in the best condition. So I think I'm going to replace all of the core wow. and I will be doing that this summer while the hull keeps drying out and hopefully I can take care of the hull 
before before it gets too cold for me to work with the poxy. And that means hopefully I could splash her this coming fall. Put her in the water. Yeah. And, and then move aboard and continue with the refit, sell Obelix, and then I'll be back down to having only one boat, which would be <laughs> great because having two is kind of a handful. <laughs> it's interesting. A lot of people, they get a house and then they get a boat and yeah. they move aboard the boat and eventually sell the house. You did that, but then you're doing it one step further. Yeah. <laughs> and there is just something that's that's very, uh, I don't want to say annoying, but it's, it's not great to have two homes. Mm. Because whenever I'm looking for stuff about Oblix, like maybe the charger for my laptop, then that could also be hiding about Athena. Yeah. Which would mean getting in the car and driving over to Athena and searching for it, which is super annoying. So it'd be much easier just to have one boat, and also Aye. with the maintenance. And, you know. How long is the commute from Obelix to Athena? Athena's only about one kilometer from from Obelix, so I'm very fortunate that way. Huh. Those are ex really extensive renovation projects, drying out the hall and also replacing all of the deck. Do you have other projects planned for beyond? those two things? I want to say these two projects are the biggest ones I've got planned right now. I do want to do a complete refit of the forward cabin. Mm. That's going to be a somewhat time-consuming project, but that's something I can do in the water and it's, yeah. What's in the forward cabin? Is that your berth? Or? She's got a rather big forward cabin for a 38-foot boat. Mm. There's a V-Birth in there, there's a small little desk with like a makeup mirror, which I guess will come in super useful. <laughs> uh, and then there's a head and a shower in there. I'm very much looking forward to just having that a little bit more space to live in and yeah. You really built a fantastic YouTube channel. How did that all start? My very first videos were from a summer cruise I did around Denmark and I want to say that was a pretty rough start because English isn't my first language oh. and I'd never been in front of a camera before so I was slightly uncomfortable and kind of stuttering my way through it. But you thought maybe this will be fun, I'll try this out and see what happens. Yeah, I had this idea in my head that once I could go cruising I'd love to have friends to visit like in, in faraway places because whether or not I find someone to go with me I am gonna go, so I might be doing it single-handed and showing up in a new place all alone, you don't know anybody, that seems like it would be harder than to come into a port and know that you know someone there or the next town over. That was my primary reason for starting to upload videos, that was to gain friends around the world that I could someday visit. Let the whole world know a little bit about you and get in contact with people through the internet who are interested in what you're doing and yeah. where you're going and how's that work so far? It has been amazing. I have met some amazing people all over the world and it's, I, I don't know, I think there's something about um, being on video, talking to the camera, it, it creates some kind of bond and it does that much more so than a blog entry would do. It's a good way of meeting people, yeah. although it's kind of one-sided to begin with. Yeah. But, but yeah, I've, I've met so many cool people and gotten a lot of friends all over the world. Wow. It's, yeah. People write to you through comments or emails or yeah. Facebook, and that's where the dialogue begins. And yeah. I'm sure yeah. people must contact you and say, if you ever go sailing up in, you know, where we are, then sure. give us a call. Yeah. And I always think that's so flattering to to have someone well that you don't know but they kinda know you. Yeah. To have them invite you aboard your boat. That's that's amazing. Wow. But it's it's gotten to the point where I do get more emails and comments and messages than I can keep up with. I feel bad not replying when people write to me. Yeah. But there are just so many comments and messages. I I can't keep up. There's no way. Yeah. It's so flattering, but at the same time, I feel bad not replying to people. But there's only 24 hours in the day. Right? Sure. 
Do you read them all? Do you get to yeah. like scan through the big list and? Well, uh, usually I read every single comment and message and email, but it, sometimes it peaks and, and I just I can't keep up. Yeah. And then I just yeah. I there are some comments or messages that I miss that I don't see, and, and that's yeah, that's mm. very unfortunate. But I don't see how I could do it any differently. So has there been an evolution to your YouTube channel? Like in the beginning you said the first videos were of a voyage you took on Obelix. Yeah. And has it evolved since then? How has it grown and changed? I started doing the videos right after I had finished a refit of Obelix. Mm -hmm. And I've always regretted not starting shooting the videos during the refit of Obelix. Because since shooting those first videos, that's what my channel has morphed into. Mm. It's about DIY boat stuff, yeah. fixing up old boats, and that's kind of become a little bit of a niche. Mm. My plan was to just document the entire transformation, from being a landlubber to being a liverboy to being a full-time cruiser. But of course, for that initial plan, the first three years now, since I've started uploading videos, uh, have been spent doing DIY projects and I foresee doing DIY projects for another four years. Wow. So it's, it's going to be pretty DIY <laughs> That's heavy. That's your niche. Yeah, at least for now, yeah. I do wish that I could kind of speed up the process. Yeah, of course. Because I only have the weekend to work on the boat. That's unbelievable. So it, it gets kind of drawn out yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Like, for instance, some of my subscribers lovingly tease me about the nine-part series I did about insulating the V-Birth aboard Oblix. Mm. And it's, it's because I can only work on the boat during the weekends. It takes a fair bit of time to get things done. And I wish I could speed that up so that I could give people more of a, yeah, more of an experience. It's amazing what you're doing. I mean, maintaining a full-time job and figuring out this massive renovation and attacking that and on top of it filming and on top of that all of the editing that it takes to produce your finished product videos and then on top of that uh, interacting with your fan base and, and trying to answer comments it's just it's it's my only hobby yeah like, like doing the, the boat stuff and filming it that is my only hobby right now mm -hmm. I'm either at work or doing that so it does take up a lot of time, but then again, it's very rewarding and I've gotten to meet some very cool people all around the world because of those videos. Yeah. So it is certainly something I want to keep doing, although it is a, a lot of work and sometimes it would be nice to just be able to sleep in and do nothing for an entire day, but <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. Do you think your channel will go through more evolution as you near the completion of the renovation and and actually leave? When you go cruising, you won't be doing this refit anymore. What's your plan there? Yeah, well, my, my plan is to continue doing the videos because, well, like I said, I want to document the, the transformation from landlubber to full-time cruiser. But at some point, my channel is going to have to change focus a little bit Yeah. because I can't keep fixing up the boat. I mean, I do plan on keeping that DIY element because I'm sure once I go cruising, things are going to break all the time. And I want to well, shoot videos of that, talk about what I could have done differently, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But that's not going to be enough content, I think. So I will have to do other stuff, like traveling videos, cruising videos like you guys do, which I love. Um, it could be product reviews, stuff like that. I haven't really figured it out, it out yet, but it is something I think about from time to time. Mm -hmm. So you said that you, your, uh, your initial thinking for your YouTube channel was that it would be a way for you to meet people in the maybe cruising community. Yeah. Were you thinking that those people would be YouTubers? Or was that a surprise? Because I know that you've met some other YouTubers, yeah. uh, like notably Kamau. Yeah. And... Alfie? Yeah. Didn't you visit Alfie? I at did. One point? I did. I visited Alfie for about 10 days and we did some cruising in British Columbia, which was awesome. And I had so much fun hanging out with Alfie. He's, he's a great guy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then 
On the way back home to Denmark, I stopped by Kamel. I was only there for maybe half a day or so. He was funny and... and what did you guys do? Well, we just talked about his project, which is very ambitious. Uh, I forget, it's, it's a 54 footboat, 57 footboat? Wow, yeah. He's building in his backyard, and that's a cool project. Not only is he almost single-handedly building it, he designed it. Yeah. Like he yeah. came up with the plan to brought it to a naval architect and said, what do you think of this? And sort of got them approved. But that's such an amazing project. I, I can't wait to s watch that project unfold. And That'll be very cool. Wow. So do you have any words of advice for someone who's thinking about doing what you are in the middle of doing now, like getting an older sailboat and doing a massive renovation. I want to say it depends a lot on what it is you want to do. Mm. Because I tend to get a lot of flack because I didn't get a survey done on Athena. But that was on purpose. Because I knew roughly everything that was wrong with her, and I knew that I could fix anything that would be wrong with her. Mm. Fiberglass is easy to work with. Mm. So I skipped the survey. So I want to say if you want to get an old boat, and maybe you haven't done another refit before, it would probably be a good idea to get the survey, yeah. just to get an idea of what you're in for. Yeah. So that would probably be my first piece of advice. Then my second piece of advice would be don't get too hung up on deadlines. <laughs> because as soon as you start pulling a thread, well, you're bound to find something else. Yeah. Like a good example of that would be last summer I noticed a an area of the hull that was had that had higher moisture levels than the surrounding areas. Mm. So I took apart part of the galley and got to that area and it turned out one of the previous owners had filled a huge area of the boat with expanding foam. Oh. open celled expanding foam that had then sucked up a lot of water and I mean you're not gonna find that just looking around and a survey is certainly not gonna find that so don't get too hung up on deadlines just hunger down and, and get the work done and yeah. then the third piece of advice would be don't listen to all of the experts there are really so many armchair DIY guys mm. and I mean it's great getting good advice but there's good advice and then there's advice mm -hmm. right? it's everybody seems to have an opinion mm -hmm. which most of the time is great but you get people that are very insistent and keep telling you that oh what you're doing is all wrong and yeah yeah it's there are more ways to skin a cat than one there are there's more than one way to skin a cat is what yeah. I'm trying to say right yep. So you must get a lot of it, like advice like from the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And often I ask for advice because mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm no great expert. Mm -hmm. I do do a, a fair bit of research before I, I take on a new project, mm -hmm. but there might be something I've missed. And I do get a ton of excellent feedback from the comments on my videos. I really hope that you can put Athena in the water this season. Yeah, that's that's the plan. It's a little ambitious, uh, especially after I realized that I had to replace all of the core. Not that replacing the core is really that time consuming, but the boat has some other issues. Mm. Um, because the core was put sort of on top of the deck instead of underneath, there are some complications that I'll have to deal with, and that's going to take a bit of time. Eventually, when you do put Athena in the water, you'll will you bring her to the marina where Obelix is, you'll have them like almost right next to each other in the same marina. If I succeed in splashing Athena this fall, she'll be in the same marina as Obelix and I'll be able to maybe live aboard Obelix until the fall, uh, until the, the spring, yep. and get a lot of the stuff that requires two component paint out of the way, mm -hmm. and then move aboard after that stuff. That'll be so exciting when you make the official jump from living on Obelix to living on Athena. Yeah. Wow. Is the plan then to sell Obelix? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and I think uh, the biggest challenge there is going to be to find a, a new owner that 
I know will be into completing the, the projects that are left aboard the boat because I haven't touched the outside of the boat. Mm -hmm. That's very much exactly like I when I purchased her. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun trying to find a, a good next owner for, for a week. Well, great. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have a great flight back. Thanks, Drake.